Hi guys, Squad here, and welcome to a Railroads Online Guide. This is Track Lane Basics. So in this video, it's specifically aimed at people new to Railroads Online, I'd suggest, because what we're going to do is we're going to discuss how to lay the groundwork and how to control gradient, how to lay curves on groundwork, how to lay bridges, just some basics, and then how to put the track on top of it. In the next video, we'll then go into the advanced stuff, which is how to lay nice parallel track like this, how to join switches up in a more complex fashion. But in this video, we're just going to cover the basics of laying the groundwork, laying some bridges, controlling gradient and curvature, and then laying track. Let's get started. Okay, before we begin, uh, there's a key mapping that I strongly recommend you change. Uh, because the defaults are, in my opinion, not very intuitive. So, press Escape, go to Options, Controls, and the ones that you want to change are these four here. This is to do with increasing and decreasing the curve radius and the gradient. This is when you're building track or building groundwork. Trying to map through these keys I find very difficult. So what I did was I changed this to right arrow key, this one to the left arrow key, this one to the up arrow key, and this one to the down arrow key. Now that means when I'm building track or groundwork up and down on my cursor keys, changes the gradient, and left and right on my cursor keys changes the curve. I'll be using these mappings during the video, so if you hear me talk about these and you've not got those set, you'll just need to adjust to whatever you've got it set to. Okay, right, press the G key, brings up the build menu. So today we're gonna focus on these three things, the rails, the bridges, and the groundwork. Let's start with the groundwork. There are two types of groundwork. One is a like an earth finish and the other is a wall finish. So this is the earthen look and this is the stone wall. They're both functionally the same. The only difference is that when you build this one out, it will end up with a, a brick, sort of almost a vertical wall at the edges, whereas this will always end up with a large slope. If we try to build a piece of earth, you'll see how they differ. So let's click on G, groundwork, constant grade, so we're just going to left click from here. We're going to drag out a little bit. I'm going to press the up arrow key. Up and down arrow controls the gradient, top left, maximum 10 degrees. So if I click that, and then I click that, and then I click that, and then right click commits it, you can see how the earthen thing works. It basically just builds a giant wall of earth. Now, until you commit something, you can't clip into it. Yeah, as you're building it, it doesn't really exist and the other players in the map don't see it until you right click and commit it at which point everybody sees it it becomes an object in the game world and you can walk around it like this so that's what happens if you build the earth slope if you build the other one which is the stone wall i'll do exactly the same i'll start back here left click press up arrow to 10 degrees i'll left click notice i can walk freely in it left click i can still walk in it look doesn't clip left click still walk in it and then the point where i right click it's now a solid object but notice very very different in how they look yeah but both get the same job done the idea of them is to create a level surface a known surface for your track to sit in because if you don't then firstly you don't know how flat the ground is because ground just varies and also you end up with this kind of vegetation problem so as you're building track through all the vegetation like that it just looks a bit nasty you know just having it all overgrown like when you drive trains through here it doesn't destroy any of this vegetation it's always there so you know it doesn't look very pleasant much better to actually build a little bit of ground like this you know it's flat and then you can build track on it and everything looks fantastic right so let's talk about how the gradients work Right, let's look at the difference between the variable and the constant gradient. So press G, click on groundwork. We're going to use the stone wall. We've got variable and constant. Let's start with constant. So we'll click constant. Now, wherever you start building, that's where it takes the initial height from. So if I start from this ground here, it will take the initial height from here. That's really useful for making continuous sections of ground. So I'll left click, I'll left click, and then I'll left click again. And now, looking back, I'll press the up arrow key and change the gradient to 10%. Notice how the whole thing moves up. If I right click, that will commit it. The entire structure is at 10% gradient. 
Let's try the variable gradient and do the same thing. So we'll go groundwork, variable, start here. We'll go left click, left click, then left click again. But this time when I move the arrow keys up, what's happening at 10% is the next piece is going to be at a 10% gradient. Yeah, so if I left click and then right click that, What's happening is everything that I'd left click up to that point stayed at zero. And when I then move to 10%, only this piece is at 10%. Now there's pros and cons of doing this. You've got to be careful, quite frankly, because when you're building your track, like along here like this, you're going to end up with a rather sharpish kind of rising gradient. Uh, so you want to avoid that, avoid any sharp changes, but also when you come to build fixed items like switches, they don't like variable gradients very much. So if we start building this, and then what happens when we approach that sudden slope is it builds up, it builds up, it builds up, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden it snaps back because it's trying to work out, well, how the heck do I lay this? So if you put that down there, you can see it just floats over the gradient, whereas if I bring it a bit further forward, it then clips completely into it. So wherever you start to transition your gradient, you're not going to be able to build fixed switches very easily, or it's going to look a bit janky. So just bear that in mind. But you've got two tools in your arsenal, a fixed and a constant gradient. Right, let's talk about curves, right? Because although we do like lovely straight pieces of parallel track, and I'll show those in a minute, Curves are an important part of a game. You're going to have to wind your way around various scenery and you need to do it consistently and be aware of what angle you're doing things at. Now, groundwork can really help with this because when you lay the groundwork, you can set the curvature and then when you build a track, you know exactly what curvature you're getting. So we press the G key and we're going to go to, we'll stay on constant stone wall because it's just, it's, it's a lot easier to visualize what's going on. So we'll start off, we'll left click down here just to be level on this track here and we'll move forward and I'm going to click left click on this one all right now the next piece is now freely available and track when you learn track it does exactly this the first piece you can point in a direction you want the second piece lets you point where you want or top left there left alt key toggle curve radius so if we press the alt key when I look around now nothing is happening right everything is going in a perfectly straight line so this lets me build lovely straight pieces with which to lay my track. However, if I want to curve things, I can also do that as well. So we've seen the up and down arrow key, which is the gradient, but also the left and right arrow key, as you can see at the top, creates a curved radius. And you can see the angle there. So if I go left 10 times, I get a, a curved radius of 10 degrees per 100 feet. So let's, let's just put it on five. You don't want it to be too sharp. So five degree radius is a nice gentle turn. So what you can do is you can just basically move out, left click, move out, left click, and then just keep walking along like this. And what you're getting is a nice five degree turn. Now let's say I get to this angle here and I decide, oh, I just want to straighten up now. Well, you can do that. If you then press the right arrow key, it will then go to zero degrees and you can keep building. Now the beauty of this stuff is you can build through trees and you'll find that very very useful now notice here we're getting very close to the ground if i pressed up and down on the gradient remember it's going to adjust because i'm on a constant gradient it's going to adjust the whole thing but what you can do as well is also you can hold the shift key and if you hold the shift key you get smaller increments you see that so what i can actually do is fine tune this so that it just brushes level with the ground before it then continues on its merry way. So what I'll do is I'll right click that and commit it. And so what I've done is basically creates a level surface from back there, which has gone over this terrain and then neatly hit the top of this ridge before it goes down again. Because with trains, you want to minimize how much energy you, you kind of lose. You want to minimize your height changes really. The other thing is you're building through the trees, which is the way you want to do it, because you build through the trees and then cut your trees down after you built the groundwork. That's a very common way of doing it. You might have to get rid of some trees initially to see where you're going, 
but the majority of them I would recommend just leaving and then just get rid of them once you've built your groundwork. So what we've got is a nice straight piece, zero degrees, and then when it gets to here, we've got a guaranteed five degree turn. How sharp can you make your turns is possibly your next question. Well, the bigger locomotives don't like really sharp turns. Certainly anything up to about 20 degrees is generally okay. Once you get above 20 degrees, this one can make pretty tight turns. This can definitely make 25, even 30 degree turns because of its axle layout. But some of the like, you know, I think the 060, we've got to go 060, let me just quickly check. Something like, um, let's say that. Okay, so the Cookie Mogul, six drive wheels, yeah? So these things are on a fixed, they, they can only take so much of a curvature. And certainly when you get to this with eight connected drive wheels, this can only tolerate a certain amount of cur curvature before it just can't do it. So try to go for like 20 degrees, particularly if you're climbing as well. Don't go more than 20 if possible. Um, you can adjust the curvature on the way, of course, but you know, with those tools, you can get lovely gentle sweeping turns. Now what you can do is just come along with your track, and we haven't really talked about track lane, but we'll cover that now. So if you click on rails, three foot rail, same thing applies. So you start, once you've built the ground like this, left click and you can start building your track. Now there's only so much you can build, before it stops building. This is the maximum of one piece. So left click, same thing. I can look either way, but if I let, if I left alt click, I'm now locked in. And now I know I can start beginning a fixed turn. So if I'll left arrow, 2%, 3% like that. What I'm doing is I'm looking for, I know this is a five degree turn, but I'm not exactly sure when to start making the turn. But what I'm aiming for is to have the same gap on that side as that side. That's the beauty of this kind of groundwork is it gives these lovely guide rails. So what I'll do is I'll left click there and then I'll go to the next piece and think, I know I need to get to five degrees, so I'll make that four degrees. And then when I get to here, maybe I can make that five about there. Now I know I should be able to roughly keep, keep on clicking. You see that? And we get this lovely gentle five degree turn all the way through the ground section. You'll never get it bang on. You can't build track and ground at the same time. The game, well, currently doesn't let you do that. Maybe in the future. Do that, and then at some point, we're gonna have to start straightening on, like now, probably. So we'll use the arrow keys again, just to um, straighten the track out. And we should be getting back to zero. Might have to make a slight adjustment there. There we go. And really, you can just, you know, that's how you can build your track, just going along like that. Now, when you right click, it will commit all that track and any player will see it. Now you notice, because I obviously came around the bend and then jinx slightly, you can see that in the track, but you know, visually it's not perfect. You can see the kind of curvature in it, but it's good enough and a train will be more than happy with that. That's one way of doing it, is to use the same curve tools as you use for the groundwork, use the same curve tools to build the track out. There's another way of doing it, and that's basically eyeballing it. So depending on how good you are at eyeballing, you can just build things without using the fixed curves tools. Right, now I'm gonna leave that track though, because I wanna show you how to connect track as well. So we'll come back here, and this time I won't use the alt key, I won't lock it in any way, I will just walk along laying track. After a while, you, you kind of get used to this, and you can lay track quite quickly, so. Three foot rail, start here. You want to try and get it in the center. And then let, I'm looking at the left and the right gap and I'm trying to keep it consistent. So all I'm doing is I'm walking along like that and just following the groundwork that I've already laid. And this is the advantage of laying nice groundwork is it makes the, the, the track laying that much easier. Now, when you get quicker, you can probably find yourself sprinting along and doing it like this but it might take a little while to get there and then when you get near to this bit get the chain symbol line it up left click right click commit the whole thing now when you look back you might see little bits that you know you don't quite like but what you can do is just delete those out the way look for the chain symbol left click 
That is how you lay a nice curve. That's how you lay the groundwork. And that's how you lay, lay rail. So now we'll have a quick look at the two different kinds of bridge and how we can lay those. Now, the whole point of a bridge is to span a gap usually to get yourself from one place to another over a valley perhaps. But you can also use it to do what we've done here, which is basically control a descent. So coming down from a very high elevation up there of a, of a few hundred feet, just taking a long winding path all the way down here to get ourselves down to the smelter. So that's one use of the bridge. Like I say, the other one is to control um, getting over a gap or running alongside of a mountainside. There are two kinds of bridge. There's the metal one here and the wooden one, and both have their pros and cons. Right, let's say I'm up here at the iron ore mine. Let's say for argument's sake that we wanted to build a bridge over this valley. Let's say we were just curving around that way and heading off into the sunset. How would we do it? How would we get across this gap? Well, there's two kinds of bridge, the wooden trestle bridge and the steel trestle bridge. The wooden trestle bridge, let's start with this one. Its main advantage is that it can visualize and build over bigger spans. So if I click here, left click there, right? And then I start to drag it out. You can see already that it gives me a massive preview of how far it's gonna go, where it's gonna go, what it's gonna look like. That's really, really useful. You will also notice the bottom of the bridge, it's like floating. So, you know, whether you're bothered about that or not is up to you. You can, you know, come in there and build some groundwork and, you know, just flood that area or build it. I've seen people build a trestle bridge and then build another one on top of it. There's all kind of creative things you can do or you can just leave it floating. It really depends on how picky you are or you could just, you know, build it further over here and just have it clip inside of the mountain and look okay. So if you left click that, it then moves on to the next section. Of course, you can now use all the angle tools as before. So, you know, press the right arrow key and set yourself a nice five degree curve. Maybe press the down arrow key, set yourself a nice one or two degree gradient. Um, you know, and you can see it adjusts the whole thing. So let's say we want a three degree gradient coming down, five degree gradient turn, let's make it two degrees. You know, left click and then come down to here left click again and then right click and commit there you go so we we just managed to build a curved descending bridge very very easily that is the main advantage of the wooden trestle bridge visually you know they can look a bit cumbersome depending on how big they get there's a lot of wood though and it doesn't cost you anything will it cost more in the future don't know but it's definitely the quickest way of building bridges and when it comes to laying track, you, you have two options, really. You can build the normal track on top of it, like this. And that looks absolutely fine, no problem. Or you've got the alternative, which is the three-foot rail deck. And, you know, you could build this on it, as well as, or instead of. And, let me just get rid of the alt key. You know, depending on what look you're going for, Either or is good. They're both exactly the same in terms of function. They're just aesthetically different. So that's the wooden trestle bridge. So let's have a look at how that compares to the steel trestle bridge. Okay, bridges, steel trestle bridge. Right, now this one is obviously stronger and more compact, but it does have one massive limitation. So if we left click this, let's do the same thing and we'll point the mouse out and nothing happens. Why? Because with the steel one, its length is limited a bit like you get when you're laying track. So this one, although it aesthetically looks, I think, better, it's harder to lay. All right, so let's do the same thing. If I left click here and then I go to build the next piece, I can't look where I want to go and I can't get on the bridge because we've not built the object yet. So therefore it's not clippable. So if I want a nice gradual, say, five degree turn with a two degree descent, as we had on the wooden bridge, I can't visualize where the end's going to be. What I have to do is I have to kind of play this weird game where I look at the ground, okay, and I left click, and then I move along to the next section and think, well, I think that's about right. Let me just see, have we gone the right way? I think so, I'm not sure. 
left click, and then keep going like this. And what's worse is you could be on really sloped terrain and end up falling down there, and you've got to work your way all the way back up again before you can carry on building your bridge. So this is so much harder. Now, what you can do, if I left click that, what you can do is right click to commit the build, right? So we've got ourselves a nice descending slope, but then, you know, I can stand on it, but then I have to first of all climb back up and the game doesn't have any ladders. So there's no ladders to climb back up here. So then I have to start building structures to get back on my bridge. And bear in mind, you know, it's not so hard here, but if I'm, you know, down the side of that mountain, this starts to get really awkward. But here we have a nice, you know, five degree slope, five degree turn, sorry, the two degree slope. So what we could do is still press trestle bridge. We can come back here and we can sort of guess where the center point is. We can't accurately snap it. So we guess it's about there. Now, I can't step on that. That's not clippable. I know that I had a five degree turn. I know that I had a two degree slope. But my first piece, I can't lock into five degrees. So I can't keep that going. So if I left click that, you know, I can see the five degrees starting to happen now. Left click that. And I can see the next piece. Left click that. And it's starting to get... Tr it's doable, but it's starting to get very tricky. So when we're here... I can't stand on this. I have to right click to commit it and now I can stand on it again. So with the steel bridge, although, you know, you can say, well, it's nice. You can see that little jank there because I couldn't accurately line up the curve. You've got to build it in sections. Um, having said that, when you have built it, you know, you can just build normal track and it has these wonderful parallel inner bits, which are very useful for just lining up the track like this. You can very quickly lay down you know, nice curved track to follow it. Or, if you want to, aesthetically, you know, why not? Put the wooden deck and have this steel-wooden combo thing going on. Whatever floats your boat. So that's like the two different kinds of bridges. Personally, I like the steel bridge, but they're harder to lay currently in the game than the wooden bridge. The wooden trestle bridge is definitely much quicker to build. So yeah, that's how you build bridges, and that's the track you can put on them. Okay, one thing I want to leave you with at the end of this uh, track laying basics video is the idea of service ramps. What's a service ramp? Basically, a way of getting back on your track, on your bridge. This is quite a big span here, and, and if you fall off it, which you will, either when you're building the, the, the bridge itself or just when you're driving your train, you'll jump out uh, to you know adjust a, a, the brake or something on one of your cars, and you'll fall off. You end up with this train rolling down the hill, and you can't even get back on the bridge. How do you solve that? You need a service ramp. As I said before, there's no ladders. Ideally, we'd have a ladder on these pylons here, but there's no ladders in the game. And you're going to need to be able to get back up because you really can't jump very high. There's two ways of doing it. One of them super simple, um, but not aesthetically pleasing. And the other one, you can kind of make it look like it's part of the bridge structure. So let me show you what I mean. So the first one, you press G, click on the constant grade. And just look somewhere at the bridge like this, about halfway up the beam there. Just click on it like that. And then look, just look, move to the left, just ever so slightly. And you'll see the groundwork start to come out. And then just adjust the angle like this to get yourself the orientation and shape that you want. You're just looking for some like narrow slope, basically. Left click, right click, and you're done. What that does is basically give you a service ramp. You can go up and down both sides of this, doesn't matter which side you fall off, you can get back on your bridge. The downside is, well, it doesn't look amazing, does it? It's just got this chunk of ground just floating in space, but it's functional. So that's one option. The other option is to basically look like it's part of the bridge structure, but to do that, you can't really do it on a big gap. You have to wait until you get a little bit of a hill, perhaps like this. And then what you can do is use your, your trestle bridge like this, whatever you've got, and just basically aim it into the side of your bridge like that let's say it comes about here so how high is that uh, that is to there so let's just pull shift to get the gradual gradient like that and then we'll just bring it back to the front left click right click and what we then have is a structure i've clipped it through but you get the idea we've got a structure that is a ramp, it's a service ramp, but it also looks like it's part of the bridge support. It's just, you know, laterally stabilizing the bridge. 
You will need them. You will use them. I do have them scattered around my bridge structures. But that is it for this video. In the next one, what we're going to do is we're going to cover more advanced stuff. So we're going to look at the switches because we haven't really covered the switches yet. We're going to look at switches, how to use them, how to have side slip switches so we go into one and back out the other so we can change track, and then how to build quite nice parallel tracks and finally siding. So we've got a lot to cover in the next video, but hopefully now you've got a good idea how to just do the basics and build track. So on that basis, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to share it with your friends and anybody else you think might benefit from a little tutorial on Wade Royals Online. But most importantly, take care guys. Happy training.